we have um, this meeting has been posted yes, in three has. different places and put on the website yes. and emailed to interested parties. Mm -hmm. Good. Mm -hmm. So we can continue. Does anyone have any uh, additions to the agenda that they would like to make tonight? I'm going to just add a couple things that weren't yeah. on the original agenda because <clears throat> I have to post it when I have a minute to do it. Yep. The, um, April 16th special meeting minutes um, <clears throat> and also um, I had added on to adopt the, the LEOP but it's on this agenda not on the one that was originally not posted done. so I figured okay. I'd mention that. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Anybody else out there? <clears throat> no? <clears throat> okay. And so let's start then with the, the meetings of the April 16th special meeting and um we I just four nine months to your regular meeting don't forget those. Oh yeah right yeah we have those here. Yeah. So I would move to accept those. I yeah, them and accept up. Accept yeah, it. All right, all in favor? Aye. 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 And then we've got the minutes for the last regular select board meeting Monday, April 9th. And uh, I don't think I have any I see a little typo correction there. Well just a 607 instead of 67. Oh, just a little okay. simple. Okay. Um, so I'd move to accept those as presented. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All righty. Okay. And the, um, we had that. And Walt, you're on the agenda that you had a question about the Rochester School Forest. Well, a little more in question. Why don't you short presentation? Short presentation. All right, we're in school then. If you can't hear, holler. <laughs> Let me begin by stating I'm not an attorney. I always have to give that disclaimer. I would like to express a citizen's concern in the matter of the town forest conveyed by quick claim deed to the school district of the town of Rochester on May 15, 1948. As trustees in the sole interest of hold, holding title, the school board's lack of a clear decision today regarding transfer of title of this land according to stated intent of the trust is liable to leave the citizens of Rochester with an expensive legal bill. I have taken the time to research trusts and to seek legal advice regarding trusts, trustee obligations, and successor trustee beneficiaries. I am offering my opinion, but urging the select board that as the successor trustees, a small legal cost for an opinion of their responsibility in the interest of the citizens of the town of Rochester now versus a possible large legal cost for litigation is in the interest of the town. It seems clear from the text of the quick claim deed that it was the intent of the grantors that exclusive use and control of the land be vested in the principal and students attending Rochester High School, primarily for instructional purposes. The principal and students alone are vested with the option to vote to discontinue exercise and control of said real estate only, such interest then to pass to the successor trustees, the town of Rochester. The trust clearly does not provide the principal and students with a right to vote for any other disposition, disposition of the land, nor does it vest the town school district with any other right than to hold the land title as trustee. Research indicates that generally speaking, trust lists successor trustees in the event that the first trustees are unwilling or unable to execute the responsibilities of the trust. It automatically passes to the successor trustees to do so. I believe that as a quick claim deed lists the town of Rochester as the final beneficiary, the select board has a legal obligation in the interest of the residents of Rochester to be engaged in this conversation. It is most likely that when this land was granted to the use of the principal intending students of the high school, the grantors never conceived a unified school district, but their intent was clearly the use and control be vested in the principal and students of the high school. They did not provide that the principal and students of the high school could vote to pass use and control to the middle or grammar schools, but specifically listed the town of Rochester. In the course of merger discussion, the school forest was included, I believe erroneously, as a district asset. I brought this to the attention of a school board member and was assured that it was a mistake that they would correct. Yet it remains an unsolved merger issue, issue expressed to me as, well, we included it. When the citizens of Rochester voted in favor of the merger, I'm sure that we expected that the school board, with guidance, would complete the transaction. It appears that a mistake was made regarding the school forest. Additionally, 
the merger may have negated a meaningful vote by the principal and students attending the high school. They cannot vote to retain the land in the manner stipulated in the deed in the interest of a high school that has been discontinued. Let me reiterate, the quit claim deed does not provide any avenue to vote for any other use, only to transfer the land to the town. The final trustees beneficiary of the trust is the town of Rochester. I believe that the select board has a responsibility to be involved in this conversation, and again, I urge them to do so. Now this was concerns and proposals, so I'm going to offer a proposal. Assuming that the 20-acre parcel comes into the eventual possession of the town of Rochester, and knowing that the select board has expressed some reservation with forest in holding parcels with deeds that need to be cleaned up, I'll go on record as offering to purchase the parcel for $333.33 plus transfer fees with a deeded commitment to propose U.S. Forest Service eventual acquisition of the parcel as an outdoor classroom for environmental learning. The proposal would include interpretive nature trails. Such a proposal would have no effect on the current or future tax base, provide the equivalency of a 50-year lease value to the town, and be consistent with both the bingo area and the Rochester Town Plan, and more importantly, honor the intent of the original grantors from 1948. This proposal is consistent with the Rochester Town Plan of April 9, 2018, in policies and goals in forestry, education, recreation, and specifically an express land strategy of selling or donating land with conditions attached, like deed restrictions or conditional transfers. It embraces the policy under Section 8 Recreation, Subsection D Forest Service, Policy 2. It is the policy of the town to continue its working relationship with the Green Mountain National Forest. This proposal embraces many of the policies of, of the Rochester Town Plan regarding local and tourist forest use as well as expansion of our local U.S. Forest Service policies of access, provides a continuing educational environment for local and out-of-town students, and could be a win for everyone. Joanna Cobb. Just open up a conversation. Um, can I ask you a question, please? Well, you were talking very quickly, and I want to make sure that I get your intent correct. I can't quote everything. Okay. Um, your intent would be to have, it, if you if you purchased it, to have it become an outdoor classroom for environmental learning, but it would be under the control of the Forest Service, or well, eventually turn over as part of an in-holding parcel to the Forest. Should they be willing to accept it? Okay. Thank you. So, so we did um, inquire to um, VLCT about this, and, and before incurring the expense of bringing it to our the town attorney, the um, it appears that there is money set aside in this whole merger process to deal with this, and um, we, we decided that at least let this play out with this, the, the expense of the school board that they've already allocated to evaluate how this can transpire, and then we figured we could bring our attorney into it. The, um, in terms of making a decision about selling it to you, I think that's really put in the heart the, the cart before the horse quite a bit. It's it's um I it's an interesting it's idea. Cool. It's an interesting idea and I appreciate the the um the sentiment, but it's nothing that um we can really seriously um deal with at this point because the um the, we have a lot to clear up before any thought of, of selling the property. I'm just trying to have a conversation. Yeah. Yeah. Do you have any input on that? Really? No, other than we, we did we we did ask the Vermont League of City and Towns um, their opinions, and um, they really didn't. They they pointed us in directions that we should go, and they they were obviously in the in the end pointing us towards a uh, lawyer's opinion, which there is one already in place that I believe we agree with. So we're going to let what has happened uh, set into concrete and then we will be picking that up as soon as we have the time on the table. The school board right now 
as you know, is scrambling for a budget. And so they've come in and out of this and tabled it a little bit, but they will be right back to it within probably the next four to six weeks. And it is definitely on their agenda to do what is right when what their attorneys advise them to do as well. Uh, Dan, when you were speaking of when this moment that is a concern, it seems like we've missed it a long time ago. Uh, I'm sorry I stepped in a few minutes late. Um, in relation to the Dandelion Daycare, do we, who, who bought it? How much? Wait, wait let's, let's stay on topic. Okay, but can go on to it just seems like a lot of things piled up on us yeah. that's unknown. And April 3rd, you had a special select board meet, town meeting, and you guys decided you wanted the Dandelion Daycare building, and now it's gone? Is that the case? I, I, can we, you explain ex what happened? We expressed our interest, but it was not our decision. It was the school board's decision whether or not to sell it. We, that meeting... How we much and who bought it? I don't know that. Why I'm, not? I'm just answering your question. With that well, meeting why was not? we expressed... Why don't we know? Would you like answers, or are you going to just well, talk I, over I, us? <laughs> I, I've been looking for <laughs> answers. Nobody's been coming up with answers. Well, one at a time. I was back like Who bought it? five sentences ago. Okay, that's not what you first asked, Cloud. So just calm down, okay? Someone bought the Dan Line Daycare. It the, is under contract. It's under contract. Okay. And it's, it's never bought till you walk so away from the clothes and the keys in your hands. So, so it is under contract to be sold. So we can pull the plug on it. If the town so wants we can to pull the plug on it. Yes, the okay. town specified the that you were interested in the building. At the, the, they, they, uh, uh, the Rochester School Board had the proposal of the town accepting the building and an offer to sell the building. They chose to sell the building. Right. And where did this money go? It's going to go towards whatever they determined. They determined the black it, it, hole. The black hole. It belongs to the Rochester School Board. That's the one, the people that they're, I'm dealing they're the with to sell it for. So this question is probably better answered at a school board meeting than at a select board meeting because it's not, it was not our building to sell. That meeting well, that you, you talked about earlier. Well, you specified that you wanted to buy it and we talked we about We expressed our interest. The public trust, public trust fund dumped yeah. over $300,000 over the last 10 exactly. years into this and that it was easily a situation where it could be transferred for a dollar to uh, the town. So go to the school board and ask them why they chose not to well, do it. It just, sounds like a, it just looks like a coup the of the sol uh, old school board to the select board. Okay. It's, it's just disgusting what's been going on around here. <laughs> It is. It I'm is sorry. disgusting. The yeah. fact that you're in this meeting. <coughs> yes, I love you, Joanne. I love you, Joanne. That you can get forty thousand dollars from this town and treat me the way you do. Well, Joanne is a good example of an elected official who's getting paid forty thousand and treating public taxpayers the way she does. Sorry. What? 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 How just? Sure. Simple. Sure. It's okay. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Joanne did not sell I'm Dan Line I'm just tired of seeing yeah. all this Bolani going on around well, here. It's just, please come on, let's yeah. start talking about what to do. You know, it, it just gets put off and put off, and then we everybody gets, it gets right up the wrong place. You can all sell. Hey, don't worry about it. Marvin, that could happen, Terry. Home. Marvin, welcome hey, home. Uh, you have any, um, well, the thing about is I can't keep quiet. What has the school board got to do with this uh, piece of land? Absolutely nothing. Which it was never deeded to you the got, school. Back to the yeah. 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 Yes, well, they're all connected, aren't they? No, they're yeah. not. Yes, they no, are, not. Martha. Okay. You say it was? No, I'm saying you're bringing us back to the original topic, <laughs> oh, right? Yeah. Of the town forest. Which is the right. Which is what the discussion was about. And now we've got a little derailed. And so why is it that Walt Wells is offering to purchase the land and then let the Forest Service have it? Why does he personally have to purchase it? Can't the, the students of the rush of the high school deed it to the Forest Service directly? I don't think so. I think it no, in the deed it has to go to the town. It has to go to the town. Yeah. With a vote of the students. 
So yeah. Yeah. They're voting, they're still, yeah. Have they already voted? No, but they will. No. They, they, know. Know. they, they, they know. can't do it until they go to probate and find oh. out how to break the trust. Okay. Okay. That's what some people uh, are just not voting. understanding. Yeah. Um, there's a question. I can't answer that. Pardon? Forget it. Okay. Well, you had something you wanted to say. It got lost. It got lost. <laughs> All right. It got lost. It might come back. So well, the short can, answer. Could you reread the first sentence of your 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 speech? The very first sentence. The, very, the first sentence. Where it starts off, I would. Stay. I'm not an attorney. <laughs> or you mean? Or you mean the other part? Where it says I would like to express a citizen's concern. Keep going. In the matter of the town forest, conveyed by quit claim deed to the school district. There you go. Holding in title only. Mm -hmm. Let me finish Correct. the sentence. They they don't have any right to anything other than to hold the title. It's yeah. the students and the principal that actually have a right to vote only to give it up. Right. And then it does go back to the town where the property originally came from. Eventually, but at, at that point, at that point in time, you did say it was the school district. They hold title only. Yes. yes. Right. They have no rights to anything on other holding. Hey, Wayne, you're back, Harlan. Hey, what's the position of the town on this whole deal, anyway? The position of the town? Yeah. For which part? School board. Which part? 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 The school forest. The school forest, yeah. We haven't been asked to give a position, you know, officially yet. So. When it's when when they've asked for our position, we will. Well, we'll Harlan's walk. asking for yeah, our position. Pretty pretty I'm sure yeah. that the town would consider taking the property. Yeah. Well, it sounds like that's the town's. We're in line yeah. to take the pro pro I property. Yeah. 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 That would be. Um, I would be. And then we would be. Yeah, as trustees. Yes. Yeah. 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 And that's what I I think would be an appropriate step. Right. Yeah. Not to get back to Dandelion, but this isn't going to go the same way that Dandelion went. Because when I left the last select board meeting, this was Dandelion daycare was going to be talked about by the town before anything was done with it, you know? And it was. It was. It's gone. But that was all we were able to do was express to the school, the school board that yes, we would be interested in taking the building. We could not direct their decision. Their decision is their decision. It's, um, so that's, that's, um, and they that's made, how that And they made your decision. Yeah, at the five-member board. Yeah. 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 Martha. Can you just repeat what you said you thought about the town and the future? Everybody's been talking and it's hard for me to take that yeah. yes. um, That you felt it would be appropriate for the town to, about the school forest, to? To accept the, the, um, the way the wording of the deed is. The way the wording of the deed is, we would become the trustees of the forest. The town would become the trustees of the forest if the principal and high school students can no longer function. Can no longer function. Okay, thank you. Yeah. And I and I think that which seems to be the direction we're going. Yes. Examine yes. it. Yeah. It's and that's in in the response to your question about this is different than what happened at Dandelion Daycare because there was not such a directed um, succession for Dandelion Daycare as there is for the town forest. So I, I, I would hope that it does not play out. Well, I'm the same just way. hoping that the town's not going to get you know pushed around by some big fancy you know supervisory district supervisory yeah. union lawyer you know it seems like since the supervisory union has moved in here all we've gotten out of is a higher level of bureaucracy right. it costs a lot of money the supervisory union is not who made the decision to and they just see it just theory. seems like everything's getting yeah. gobbled up by them yeah no it's a mess yes you have something clear well, in response with this mess Mm -hmm. uh, I have not heard from the students that the principal has even approached them that they have this opportunity to deal with their property. And by the way, we have a supervisory union lawyer involved with going to probate court to try to take this property, the bingo school property, where the students have been not offered, 
have been not offered a lawyer. Where are the levels of responsibility on the town? I think again you're in the wrong meeting to bring those up. No, no. You can't keep putting all this stuff in different silos. You're going to have to start relating to this as a community. We have no control over. Oh, I, I know you don't have any control over nothing. No, I'm sorry. Yeah, I know it's it's the Vermont City League's and towns that's in control. It's a Twin River Ottaquichi that's in control. You guys don't have any responsibilities anymore. That's what's happening. We have some responsibilities, and we'd like to move on to them, if, if, unless anyone has anything else they'd like to say on this, this topic. I'd like to hear from you. Is there a uh, date by which this issue needs to be resolved one way or the other to satisfy some of the legal requirement? Like, does this have to be resolved and passed or moved by July 1 or the end of the calendar what year? What needs to be resolved? What, you know, the status of the town forest. I don't think so. It's, whether it's part of the unified school district, it sounds July like it's first. Not. So no. It okay. would, July it first. Would, All right. July first is when the unified school district takes Please. over, and the Rochester school district is is dissipated. Dissolved. Yeah. Okay. But and, but any of those requirements of the trust and the deed and all that stuff would still hold past that date if I they weren't resolved. So. It would hold past that was, date, especially yeah. if it if it's deemed not to be part of the school. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, the issue about the students voting, there's nine high school students, as I understand. Mm -hmm. When did they graduate? June. June 9th. Right. That's before the merger. That's right? seniors, though. Is They're that not no right? no longer sorry. high school students. There's only three. Or, is, or do we have some less than seniors that are still here? Well, we have two that are still here, right? Three more. That, that are not seniors? I think there are three. There are oh, okay. three more that are still there. I was just didn't know whether we had only seniors or whether we had yeah, seniors. It's a odd number there's anyway. Seniors there. She's getting the stalemate. <laughs> I don't think it's uh, 20 acres, is it? 15.1 15 15 15 15 right. 15 acres. And people were thrown around the 20 mark. It's less than that. The deed says 20 acres. Uh, Right here. Okay, well, then there's a, dis there's a obvious uh, discrepancy between that and the tax map, then, which is not uh, unusual either. <laughs> That's right. That's not That's not you, do, yeah. you do follow the deed. It says being about 20 acres of land. Right. About. 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 Joan is not able to make it here tonight, but I have um, her reports and updates. And today, the VYCC Vermont Youth Conservation Corps crew, under the direction of the White River Partnership, planted the undeveloped portion of the park and ride lot this afternoon with low-growing native shrubs, choke cherry, and red osier dogwood um, on the north end of the lot. And um, they're going to plant some sycamore saplings along a stream. Basically, this is to help to um, stabilize that in terms of um, erosion pre prevention and um, maintain that. So that's uh, that was pretty um, pretty simple and non-contensive. Uh, the, uh, the town is also signing an agreement with the White River Partnership to maintain the planting for at least 20 years, which essentially means we won't cut or remove what's been planted. Um, there's no requirement to place anything that dies there. Um, and also in the park and ride, we need to install curving around the perimeter of the parking area, and that can be scheduled for sometime this spring or summer, and we do have 1100 in the grant budget for this, so that will be a project once we're done. Um, Plowing snow, maybe we can get it's around. It's been to done. We take it out so we can plow. Snow. Oh, you took it out so we can, can plow. Go back. All right. Yes. Yeah. Is it uh, concrete or timber? No, tires. Timber. Timber. Yeah. timber. All right. And 
Hebert Excavating is prepared to start work on the village septic upgrade project by May 21st, um, possibly the week before, depending on the weather. And a pre-construction meeting with Herbert and Dubois King is being set up. Yep, and they have a few dates that um, they want us to let them know whether or not would be appropriate for that meeting. So we can warn it if there's three of us there. And she has recently applied for some grants, one to VTrans how highway, Town Highway Structures Grant for uh, culvert replacement design at uh, slope failure on top of Mountain Road below Terry Severy's house. And that's an estimated cost of $12,000, which the town's cost share would be 10%. Mm -hmm. And also a VTrans Town Highway Class II roadway grant, which would be engineering for the larger slope failure on Bethel Mountain <coughs> Road parallel to Brook Street, and estimated cost $45,000, and we would be sharing 20% of that. So uh, we had um, cost for engineering only. That's the engineering only, not the construction, right? Right. There will be a, a VTrans grant monitoring visit with Joanne and Joan on May 9th, um, looking at the park and ride grant, the Mount Cushman culvert replacement design, Bethel Mountain Road slope repair, and the Governor's Highway Safety. And Mark will probably be there for the last one. I see he's not here tonight. And as an update on the current grant and aid project, which is ditching on Town Line Road, um, we need to work on updating that. The extended completion deadline is June 30th, and we need documentation of the town's 20% match, which is $2,400 in time, material, and equipment use. And we's, um, she's been working on an update to the Class 2 roadway grant for North Hollow Road. And works, um, work involved graveling, which I noticed did a lot of, a lot of good on that. This mud season, that's in good shape. And, uh, and uh, is that completed now, or is there no, still more to go on? Some of that has yeah. uh, pavement tailings up through there, too. Yeah. Yeah. Which um, works well. The um, Two Rivers Ottaquichi Board will approve our new town plan at their meeting this Wednesday. After that, Joan's going to resume working with Two Rivers Ottaquichi Regional Commission's Christopher Damiani at the, on the Village downtown redesignation. And we also need to review our current driveway permit requirements and um, possibly update it so we're in compliance with the new municipal roads general permit. And that is probably a, a select board project more than a planning board project. Okay. But, yeah. 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 Well, yeah. It, it will involve both, but yeah, probably involve us both, to but it. Yeah. Spearhead it. And speaking of which, we did, did we get that driveway permit um, for, um, up in the hollows, it's, um, Jeff Sherman. Jeff Sherman's place. We have that here to, because that's something. Tonight. We, yeah, tonight. Oh. Yeah, we grab that because that's something we can just do together. So um, I see no one here from the library or the constables. Um, Dan, are you tired of plowing snow yet? The door's open. It's warm. It's nice out. You're wearing it shorts. Great. It was great. Wearing all last awesome. weekend. Yeah. <coughs> Winter's gone long enough. Yeah. 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 Uh, I talked to Mike Bowen about the renting the pit down there for gravel. Twenty four hundred bucks for the year. Storing gravel, you mean? Well yeah. Yeah. Instead of down here in the floodplain. <laughs> and we can put more than that up there. Culverts can go up there. Stuff that's down here in the floodplain can go up there. Excuse me. Is that where you're going to bring the salt? salt? No, the salt's going to the sand. They're going to stay right down there where they... The where you bring it? No, I'm saying... Mike Bowen's pit. Oh, okay. Mike Bowen's pit. He finally came up with the price of $2,400 for the year. Uh, to use that as storage. And that could be a locked yep. place mm -hmm. to have access to. So... Yep. The, um, this is something we've been talking about for a couple of years because mm -hmm. I think that... Um, 
storing our gravel pit in the floodplain is probably breaking a few rules. Many. Yeah, many. And Sal used to use that pit many years ago. Yep. Mm -hmm. At the same spot. At the same spot. Well, what is, what is the year? What is the, it's not calendar year, is it? No, it'll be fiscal year. Fiscal year, yep. July 1. Fiscal year. We can start right now, but mm -hmm. I told them that it wouldn't be because I don't think Joanne Rice wants to write a check on the 1st of July. First of August, he said we'd be fine by him. He wasn't. So he, I, you could do it monthly. I said it'd probably be so just easy for you to write one check a year. And so move it. Yeah. Be done with it. We'll have to figure all right. Come at it. Um, all in favor? Aye. 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 Yeah. Yeah. We still have to deal with the salt issue at some point. Yeah, we will, but not standing up there. Yeah, having the salt. I mean, Irene took all the salt away that we had there. It's in the floodplain. Too. The whole town <laughs> garage is in the floodplain. Yeah. I mean, if we're going to move the salt shed, the town garage is going with it. Mm -hmm. that package deal. Yes, it's kind of handy to have a loader to load the salt. <laughs> <coughs> so there'll be no more gravel deposited down there. And no, that's that's cleaned up, but be spread out what's there and then. There. So you'll bring the loader up over there for the summer. No. Just one, one. They'll be able to dump over the bank up there. Okay. Yep. Same as like they used to do with the sand. <laughs> So all the time we'll need to load it down there is when we're going to haul it over. Right, so you just drive it over? Yeah. And drive it. Yeah. yeah. You probably won't leave it there for an extended period of time. No, I don't leave it equipment out anymore. I get the window smashed out of the grater. I Martha? Or anybody use it. I heard you correctly, did you're storing gravel there, not sand, right? Yes. Right. Gravel. Oh, gravel. Okay. Right. Thank you. Yeah. And that will also open up to where the gravel is currently now being stockpiled that was kind of the secondary parking area for the new town mm -hmm. park so that'll open that up uh, for that that eventual use which should be good and any other updates you want to make us how's the the mud drying up not too bad right now good yeah, yeah. are they done with right the off the, the, What's that? the federal sign people they're working on it they're still working on it. Yep, they were here today. They still got up on the amp not very high up yet. Mm -hmm. to them. So another couple days. I would assume at least, yeah. And I think next week we're probably gonna switch to four tens. And we'll probably <coughs> day to work Monday and I'll work Friday to get the greater one. Any idea when the road posting signs would come down another two weeks? I would hope before then, but I'm not gonna okay. give you a date right yeah, now. Go <laughs> we have a list of equipment you want to store in the old fire station. Anything that sits outside, most of the stuff that's inside that we don't use very often, yeah. yeah. Can we start moving it up there? Mm -hmm. Let's see yeah. why not. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Give us an inventory of what's going in yeah. so that we know where it is. Yeah, I'll have a list. And you put out I've got a ton and a half of cold batch today. Saw that. <laughs> and we just got another ton. The stuff they missed, last batch they made, has got a lot of, uh, of uh, glue in it. It's good stuff, so I'll send them over to another load. Mm -hmm. And we'll put some more out, mm -hmm. hopefully, this, this week. Mm -hmm. But it's not me. new in the water world. Uh, water world's okay. Uh, you need to sign that for the voice of King. Yeah, yeah, I've got that right here. So they can come on Friday to do the spring walk around. Uh, hopefully we'll get it done Friday, but I won't guarantee it. Other than that, I just I'm starting to get ready for it. Eric? I, I did talk to Louis Donay today about giving an estimate on plug and play in that generator unit into the well house. Yeah. The pump house. So I just want to let you know that I'm trying to bring that to the, from the back burner to the forward burner. And I'd like to get that job done so if we need it. It's just, a, you know, it's, it's easy. You know. So I'll let you know what goes on with that. It is. I mean, it's not a big deal, but it also is. It's you never, never had to be used. Is it? You said it's a couple of days of work, but it'd be nice to be able to just, you know, plug in and with yep. a transfer switch. 
make it work the way it's supposed to work when, when needed. So apparently the transfer switch has been in storage for a long time. He is, it was supposed to be done a long time ago. Yeah. yeah. Right. Like years. Yes, so, I heard. That yeah. okay. so the um, walk around with the boy and king that he was referring to is our annual re review and report uh, the wastewater system and our also our 2018 professional services agreement with the boy and king and um, which is a lump sum amount of no, that, that's I think you find out just an estimate and they base it on, I think that's not to exceed that. Not to exceed. I think in the years past it's been less. So it's not to exceed $2,800. Okay. Yeah. So I'm the second of May meeting which is Memorial Day. Um, we want to nudge that on and not do any guys got any plans, special plans for Memorial Day? Um, I don't. Yeah. Uh, that Monday, uh, it would be fine by me. The week before, mm -hmm. I'll be out of town. Yeah. The week after, I'll be fine. Yeah. What about you? Uh, not sure. Not sure. Tuesday? Yeah. Tuesday? Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. Well, what? I mean, I'll, I'll, I would, I'll try to be here on that day. We can, we can do a Tuesday. Mm -hmm. Well, that that Tuesday. No, we don't have yeah. four Tuesday would bills. be. Tuesday is the planning meeting. Tuesday is the planning meeting, right? Yeah, That's when you start imagining. Tuesday the third. Tuesday. Tuesday. No, we're talking the second. May meeting, which is Memorial Day. Oh, I thought this was May so too. So the 29th oh, second May. Oh, is that okay. Really oh, okay. We so have two meetings in May, one on the 14th and one supposedly on the 28th, which would be Memorial Day. So we can move it to the 29th or... Uh, you could also um, decide this in our first meeting in May, so then we'll have a better idea of what's going on coming up. Yeah. Yep. Just table that for now and then we'll know what our schedules are like and mm -hmm. what other meetings might interfere. But we'll have a meeting one way or the other. Yeah. yeah. All right. Which will be properly warned. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Okay. yeah. Absolutely. So um, Vic's revisions now are moving on to the, um, the local emergency operations plan. Um, and um, Vic has a list of revisions to it. Do you know if those revisions have been incorporated they are. into this? Yes. Yeah. yes. Yeah. And um, most of the revisions are updating names and contacts. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. So no, at all. Is no, they. Um, So anyway, I guess I would move to accept the new revision of the local. I, I, before we do that, I have one question. Yes. Why am I re why am I replacing you? <laughs> you weren't at that meeting. <laughs> <laughs> the one I missed. <laughs> <laughs> um, you sure you don't want to be here the 28? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm 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 okay. I'm just curious. Where does it say? Where is that? It might. It's just on be page 13 of the. It might just. Um, I just don't remember voting for it. I guess that's the way it works. <laughs> <laughs> no, we did, actually we did not replace doing it all. No. Okay. We I think we added. Yeah. Okay. So we can do it again. Okay. Yeah. 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 Okay.
Yeah, yeah, so it's not me. <laughs> yeah, and that's not in the um that's not okay. in here. So yeah, you're you're uh, yeah, but not that's, yet. that's correct, I'm sure of it. But if you don't come to the Memorial Day meeting, we might vote you. Yeah, we might vote you on this one. So I'd move to, um, okay. to accept this wrong um, favor. Yeah. Uh, Aye. Aye. agenda for tonight. Sir. I just have a quick question. Yes. The, uh, speaking of the, the what you just spoke of, that I, I can't remember the name of the company, but the company that's in financial trouble right now with the microwave uh, mm -hmm. di emergency dispatch cell towers, does mm -hmm. that affect us if they were to go belly up? Are we? Do we use their service? The one that's out here? Mm -hmm. No, that's, no. This was a, no, this was a, um, that was at Zillian. What they, that is the company that, what's the name? Um, they, they're the ones that went belly up at, there was a bunch of grant money out there after Irene to help improve the emergency readiness, yep. what have you. And one of the issues here was communication and, you know, we could get AT&T coverage if we drove up the hills and bounced off Pico, but the, the, repeater or the cell tower in the church was dead after their battery died and there was no generator to um to run that. To serve, right and so there was grant money out there and they put in this little hot spot here that is um i guess it's battery powered and solar you know charged batteries mm -hmm. that gave a hot spot for some of the other services so you see yeah, occasionally the, people the Verizon hot yeah spot. Verizon yeah. hot spot and some of the others and, and they're they're dotted up and down the state highways up and yeah. down Route 100 every one two or three those miles. things look, they look like a phone yes 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 they yeah. all yeah. Up. yeah yeah mm -hmm. what is that 4G or they're, 5G or something? no no not even they're, they're just small cell Mini cell towers. Yeah, but I mean, you can't pick it up on a flip. Fl 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 no, it's emergency services. It's right? for Verizon. No, no, no. really. It, no. It, it gives Verizon service. Oh, it's not Verizon. Yeah, because AT and T didn't want to buy into this. Okay, okay. okay. So um, that it, <coughs> Verizon probably Sprint. I'm not sure what other companies, but you know, it's not A and T and T because they didn't they That's didn't they didn't subscribe to that theory. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. Um, there's some in Hancock, some in Stockbridge. Going for state, state aid to come to the rescue because they were ready to file for Chapter 11. Right. Uh, with the microwave cell technology. And there are some towns that don't have any AT&T signal, and therefore these little gizmos up and down the state highway provided something to the town. When that company goes belly up, those towns will revert back to having no access to cell service. But that's not us. So the that's signal, not us. The signal no. that comes from the from the tower in the church on um, Staple AT&T. I thought so. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Okay. As long as we're covered. No, I just wondered because I have a track. <laughs> I didn't know if I needed so to put an antenna back on that red barn. <laughs> <laughs> and it didn't used to work until, and, but now it does. Right. And they so. say that used to provide your phone. that would be affected by that. And, um, I, I think Hancock is one of them, even though it's not on the list. Um, mm -hmm. Hancock doesn't always pull up when you get up the branch. It doesn't pull off of Granville, and they were feeding off of a couple of those as it went up the hillside, and they'll be losing that. So I don't know that they're off 100% yet or not. Okay. They, I'm not sure. They were I'm threatening curious. to. How how far do you say the hot spot reaches out? Um, this one right here. Yeah. Now and then yeah. I have people in the bike shop say, oh, what's going yeah. on? I have Verizon, but then it doesn't work. Not very yeah. far. It's really no. just in right. the parking lot yeah. and, you know, very... Town five, 500 feet, isn't it? Something. Yeah, right. Might, um, there, is, there is one in Stockbridge at the bottom of Timberhawk, so the people in Timberhawk get it, but it's, it's almost a line of sight. Mm -hmm. it's, it's not very far. Is that right? Yeah. 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 A thousand feet. That's but over the last summer, I've seen several times people parked out here right. working away on their phones yeah. Yeah, because I know that this is a spot right. where they can uh, yeah. stop and check their email. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. <coughs> um, 
Does anyone else have anything else they'd like to contribute tonight? Thank you for the um, stimulating conversation, as always. And we will uh, endeavor to persevere. <laughs> <laughs>